All right, so now that we have our camera set up, let's go ahead and create a C Sharp script and the folder called scripts to hold that script in that will move our ship uh, left and right. So in our assets folder, go ahead and right click, go to create, and then select folder. And let's go ahead and rename this scripts. All right, within that, I'm gonna right click on that scripts folder, go up to create, and then select C Sharp script. I'm gonna name this spaceship underscore CTRL, all caps. You probably guessed it, the CTRL stands for controller, so this is our spaceship controller. Now what I'm gonna do is select my spaceship and my hierarchy, and then I'm gonna scroll down a little bit, and then somewhere above by this mesh collider, I'm gonna left click and not release my left mouse button and drag and drop it. So I get something like this where there's a blue arrow. Alternatively, what you can do is you can select this add component button, and then you can start to type out spaceship and you'll notice that it found that script. And you could also left click on this to add that. Now it looks like I have two on there because I added a second one. So to remove it, you can click on these three dots and go ahead and click and select remove component. All right, let's go ahead and double click our spaceship controller script to open it in Visual Studio. Now there's gonna be one change that I'm gonna make uh, to these two functions that come pretty standard within Unity. Uh, why don't you create a new C Sharp script? If you're not familiar with these, make sure to go back to module one or lesson one and go through the basics of C Sharp videos where I explain what these do. Let's start by highlighting all of the code from line seven to 11 and deleting it by pressing the delete key. Now I'm gonna change update to fixed update. If you recall that the difference between update and fixed update is you wanna use fixed update for anything that has to do with physics. So go ahead and hit Control S, and we know this is saved because there's an asterisk here. Now, as I mentioned, anything that has to do with physics, if you did the previous tutorials, then you probably guessed that we're gonna return to our Unity scene and add a rigid body component to our spaceship. Here we are back in Unity. Let's go ahead and uh, compress some of these components. And then down at the bottom, click on Add Component and begin to start typing rigid. And we want to select rigid body, not rigid body 2D. When we get into creating our 2D games, we'll be using a rigid body 2D. Now, with this rigid body selected, if I go ahead and press play, let's see what happens to our ship in relation to this uh, grid up here. Notice that it begins to fall down away from the camera. We don't want that, but we do want control over the physics component, which adds nice movement, like when we hit our WASD keys or arrow keys, it'll add some nice um, weight to our ship. Go back to your rigid body here and turn off the use gravity check mark. Now, when I press play, we'll still be able to use physics, but we won't be using gravity. So you'll see that it sits right there. Awesome. Let's go ahead and hit Control S to save this in our scene and also, Remember, as I mentioned before, this is a prefab. So we want to make sure that if we were to delete this, that it would retain this new rigid body component as well as the script that we added before, which is our spaceship script. So make sure to click on overrides and hit apply all to apply all of these changes to that ship. Okay, now we can uh, return to Visual Studio and start to script the ship movement. All right. Now that we're in Visual Studio, I'm going to begin to type the first line of code. I'm actually going to hold Control first and then scroll my wheel in to zoom in, just so that it makes it a little bit easier for you to see. Now I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to paste the text within here that will make our character move horizontal. All right, so let's take a look at some of the code that I just pasted in. Now, this first line, if you recall, is a variable. And the variable, we can give it pretty much any name within the naming conventions. Like you can't have like a colon or things like that. But we name this move horizontal because we want to use our AS or uh, left and right arrow keys to move it horizontally. And we're storing the value to uh, of whatever is, uh, is being pressed. So for instance, when we press our A or D keys or our arrow keys, which are stored in this horizontal keyword, uh, we're getting that input and we're storing it in this value. Now I'm going to pause the video and return to Unity and just clarify what that meant. 
So back in Unity, if we go up to Edit, and we go down to Project Settings, you can see here we have a variety of different settings that we can play with. One of these is our Input Manager. If we expand these axes here, there's a keyword that says Horizontal, and there's another called Vertical. The negative button is the left arrow key. The positive button is the right arrow key. In addition, we have the A and D key that can be pressed. We're going to be creating a vertical in a moment, but I didn't want to overwhelm you with too much code right away. So you can see here by just using this input.getAxis, and you can see this is our axes, and we're referring to this horizontal value. It gives us access to all of these different values as well as the sensitivity if we're using a thumbstick. I'm going to go ahead and close this and return to uh, my Visual Studio to continue to explain the code. So now we're storing the key pressed of our arrow keys or our A and D key, and we're storing it in this move horizontal value. Well, here we're creating a variable uh, below called movement, which is of type vector3. And what we're doing is we're saying in the this new vector3 that we're going to store that value being pressed inside of move horizontal, which is the x-axis. So again, let's return to Unity and see exactly what this means. Notice in our transform here, our position consists of an x-axis, a y, and a z. So what we're doing is we're saying as A or D is pressed, if we press the A key, it's going to add a negative value. If we have a D key, press our D key, it's going to add a positive value. Let me go ahead and zero that out. And so what that does is if we return to Visual Studio, you can see here that it's going to store that value inside of a vector 3, which is a variable that stores three different values. And then we're going to take that value, which is move horizontal, stored in movement, and we're going to get the rigid body component, which is the physics component that we added. And we're just going to say, hey, when we press those keys, we want to add some velocity or force based on that A or D movement press. So let's return to uh, Unity and let's play the game and see how this works when we press the arrow keys. So I'm going to go ahead and press play. And I'm going to press the A key. And it looks like our ship is moving pretty slow. And I'm going to press the D key. What I'd like to do is have a public variable that's going to control that speed so that when I press W, S, A, or D, we can kind of move our ship in a circle. So let's go ahead and add the vertical movement. And then we're going to add another variable that's public called speed that allow whoever our game designer is, or if we're the game designer itself, to easily edit that value to control the speed of our ship. So I'm going to go ahead and press the play button again to stop it. And let's return to uh, Visual Studio to add that code. So let's go ahead and on line 12, I'm going to press Control D to duplicate this line. And I'm going to change this to vertical. And then to save time, I'm going to highlight that vertical keyword, hit Control C, and just double click in here and paste it, making sure not to interrupt the curly, uh, the, the two quotes, and to make sure this is spelled correctly. Now I can double click this move vertical value, hit Control C, and I'd like it to move uh, on the Z axis, not up and down on the Y. And I'm going to save that. Now it's storing my W, S, A, and D key values. Now up here, what I can do is I can make a new float value called speed. And I'm going to make this equal to one for now. And I'm going to save that. So right now you're not going to notice a big difference. But what I can do inside of here is I can say my velocity is equal to the movement coming here times speed. So let's go ahead and save this. And let's return to Unity and take a look at this value here. Now let's make sure before we go that we make this public so that it's able to be exposed within our viewport. Let's go back and check this out. Here we are back in Unity. My spaceship is selected. Let's go ahead and make sure that we find our spaceship script and we expand this. And now you can see we have a speed value of 1. So I'm going to go ahead and press play. And now when I press W, you can see my ship moves forward. And I press A, it moves left, and then D and right. But it's still very, very slow. So let's try a value of 10 here. And let's click back in our game. You can see it's much faster. And we've got some pretty cool movement going W for up, S for down, A, and then D. 
So feel free to have fun and play around with that value. Just make, take special note that in our speed here, nothing that's in play mode is saved. So make sure to enter that value if you like it. So I thought 10 was fine. And that's it for this video.